Hello and welcome again to this, the next session of the advanced writing module as part of this course in English. We began talking about writing to argue and we saw that when we write in support of or against some topic or the other, one part of the issue or the other, then you know we use a certain kind of language. Okay. We continue this presentation here in this session today and uh, we will see two things today. Number one, how are usually arguments structured? And number two, what kind of syntax, what kind of sentences are used uh, in writing for argument or even while speaking to argue. Okay? And we are going to take, as we did last time, uh, some extracts from some video and some, sorry, some video clip and examples from some written document to make our point. Please pay attention. Next. The structure of argument is important. Just as language is, so is the structure of argument. Okay? How you bring in what you have to say. You know, do you, do you bring your best point in the beginning? Say for example, are you in favor of parents staying, one of the parents staying at home and you say that out loud in the very beginning? That is one choice. A lot of people say that, well, I am for this. I am for mothers staying at home. Okay? It may be boring, it may be uneconomical. But this is the best way, time-tested way to raise a kid. Some people can say the same thing maybe at the end. So finally, I am sure no one has any doubts that one parent must stay home and this must be the mother. Okay? Some bring it somewhere in the middle. Okay? Now that we have looked at some evidence, some facts, we have found that a number of fathers, at least 17 percent of fathers have stayed home, but these fathers have stayed even while they were at home, they spent time on their cell phones, on computer games and you know doing other things and the child hurt itself and it was almost like not having a parent home. Whereas we studied the mothers and we found that you know, regardless of their personal hobbies, the mothers paid the best attention to the child, spent time with the child, did also other work at the household. So it seems mothers are naturally gifted to uh, be better caregivers, better care providers for children and they should be home. Sorry, these are not my personal views, please. Okay? But arguments are often structured in this manner with or without statistics, with or without anecdotal support. It is a choice every author, it is a choice every speaker has how you make your case, but a structure has to be there. Before you start writing, before you start speaking, you have to decide what you are going to say first what you are going to say next and what you are going to say last. Are you going to paraphrase? Are you going to recapitulate? Are you going to rewind and listen and represent? All these choices are yours. The only constraint is all good presenters, all good lawyers, all good advocates, all good activists keep the listener's interest in mind. Are the listeners bored? Are the listeners tired, fatigued? Have they already begun praying that our presentation ended? So don't, don't do that. That will be the best way to lose your argument. 
The best way is to keep it interesting, short and sweet, illustrated with examples, occasionally bring some statistical evidence and structure your argument such that you make the point, you make the valid point and not be biased either this side or that side. That is the best way to write the best essay. Okay, next. Language of argument. We began talking about it in the, in the earlier session. We will look at some more examples. See, very often documents of this kind use complex sentences, two clause, three clause sentences, you know. I mean, you know, any, any parent, you know, either of the two parents can stay home. That is one clause, not a sentence as intended. Either of the two parents, either of the parents, either parent can stay home, comma, but the best care has been given by mothers. Okay. One can also say, while there have been lots of studies saying that fathers are not the best caregivers, comma, there, however, are nearly 13 percent fathers who gave better care to the child than perhaps any mother could. The studies, you know, some 373 fathers were observed and it was found that almost 280 of them played with the child, took the child out, had a sports, had conversation. So, the child's language developed. The point I am making is not that you should speak this way or that. The point is arguments can be structured this way. Look at the syntax while, whereas, if, then, you know, this is, the, you know, there is lots of complex sentences. You should have very good grip on syntax, okay, so that, you know, you present arguments concisely, precisely and effectively. Sometimes even simple sentences, but they are used in contrast, you know. Uh, what I have before me is, is, is a well-known example from a well-known writer, Jawaharlal Nehru, writing to his daughter while she was very young, you know. So, you know, he said he is introducing the cosmos to his daughter and he writes two simple sentences, but contrasting against each other. Stars twinkle planets do not. Each sentence, each clause is simple, okay, but together it, they make a complex sentence. So, quite often the documents, so basically this is how an essay making arguments or presenting arguments is structured. Okay. Examples once again can be a statistical, you know, at larger policy levels when you are talking for a state, when you are talking for a big corporate organization, but at a personal informal level, you know, some statistics may be all right, but it is anecdotal. Just as at the corporate level, some anecdotal argument ca evidence can also come in. But you know, build your structure accordingly, a mix of, a judicious mix of how much of what like salt in sambar, do not have too much of x or y, okay. But similar occasions in social circles among friends and family have anecdotal rather than statistical evidence, okay. What kinds of language? Let us see. You know, you can have abundance of clauses with if x, y happens, then a, b, c would hold. While M and Y were going, this T and Y was sleeping, or oh, whereas there, as you reap, you know, as you sow, so you reap, goes a famous adage. Okay, next. Look at this extract, you know, uh, uh, from a real document. Okay. What do you find? 
you find things like if this seems contradictory, you know, that why would a parent in two income household believe their life choices were damaging to their children, you know, then, then is not written there, but you know, every sentence that begins with an if implies the presence of then, then. It's like you in the imperative sentence, you know. You don't say you open the window, but it is implied when you say open the window, please. That means you are saying you open the window, please. Similarly, you know, then is implied here. So, keep in mind that past few decades have see, seen a sea change in working parenthood, etc., etc., you know. And once again, like happens in arguments, you can have lots of words referring to numbers without giving numbers, like you know C change, change of what percentage? It is idiomatic, it means big change, but you know the numbers are not given. So quite often 31 percent, 31 percent of how many? Only about a third of households, a third of how many? Okay. At that time, the contrast comes by far while so as or so that, okay, this is the structure of a document presenting argument and we should have enough practice. You know, how, how do you learn these things? As I have been saying, you learn these things partly by hearing, partly by listening. We are grateful that you have found us worthy of your attention and you are doing this course. But I must also tell you that only by listening to us, the best learning will not happen. The best learning will happen when you go to write, create some documents of your own after listening to us using real life examples. Okay, go next. Look at this extract. Find examples. These are those words which are there only because this document presents an argument. If this document were telling a story, there was a king who had three daughters, then these expressions would not be there. Go next. It is time. You wrote, you produced your own, you know, uh, document presenting an argument. So, we have given you some topics. Take one. So, for example, write an essay on one of the following topics and you can think of many more topics of this kind. So, for example, one, you know, a lot of people are saying uh, that, you know, big chain stores should not be allowed into retail marketing of domestic items, everyday consumption items like, you know, vegetables, fruits, milk, meat, fish, bread, that sort of thing. Do you agree? Okay, that there should be big global joints, multinationals should be banned in this area. Why, why not? You know, find argument. Or you can take another topic. Must a child be taught in English from the time of its birth? Okay. Many people say yes, and they say that since children are good at learning anything, and since English is nearly, nearly inevitable, no matter what you do in today's world, you got to know English. Otherwise, you cannot look at a global audience and a, a, very, a good job or even good marriage, people say. Okay. So, they say all children should have, uh, you know, English from the very first day. There are, however, others who, 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 who differ, who say, no, we will be depriving the children of their chance to learn a mother tongue, an entire culture, you know, a, another language, a foreign language, a second language can also be learnt a little later, maybe as well or maybe a little less, but why deprive them? 
of an entire culture which they can inherit for no special and no extra effort. Okay. So, there are arguments on both sides. What is your opinion on the subject? Examine the issues, present arguments and ideas and examples in support of both and then present your conclusion, what you think will be the best to do. So, you know examine related issues, this is how you will learn and as I said before, not one draft, not two drafts, do as many drafts as you can and until you feel and now this can improve no further and then you can share it with your friends, with your reviewers, with your teachers, with us for comments and opinions or go to another topic, you know. Lot of people say that the state should have absolute power on public roads, on streets, in public life, but why should the state bother about what we do at home? what we talk about, who we talk to, what language, you know, unless I hurt others. There are opinions. There are people in one kind of culture who say, no, what you do at home also influences public life. Therefore, the state should have that power to, just as it has an obligation to protect you at home it should also have the power to see how you live at your home. On the other hand, there are those who say, no, a state's responsibility and a state's power ends in public domain. What you feel? Take any of these topics and, and argue on both sides in about 200 words. Check your drafts and you will find that you are writing better, your world view has grown and you know, you are able to not only write better, you are also able to talk better. Next, we are going to give you, okay, but do not look at it just now. First, do your own work, then compare your work with the synopsis we are with, with the samples we are going to give. If you feel you have not done as well, rewrite it, do it again, and you will find that in this kind of write and rewrite one draft and then doing another revising, you know, not only your world view, not only your language, but your total makeup as an intellectual grows. Thank you very much.